My name is Murkome. <laughs> In case you've forgotten, Mr. Speaker. No, no, no. I cannot forget my senators. Uh, Mr. Speaker, <clears throat> I, on a more serious point of order, Mr. Speaker, you have given, uh, you have outlined a very serious uh, process that is required to deal with a motion of this magnitude. The speaker, you've even gone ahead to indicate that this is an historic moment because there's never been another deputy speaker who has been uh, removed from office or such a debate of this kind of removal of the deputy speaker. And you know, Mr. Speaker, what befalls the deputy speaker under the standing order and the constitution befalls the speaker. It may not be the current speaker, it can be any other speaker. The speaker, I'd like to know from your office was the deputy speaker served with the charges for his removal? Was he also, Mr. Speaker, notified? No, Mr. Speaker, was he notified? Because it's in your communication. Was he notified of this sitting plus uh, the charges? And was he, Mr. Speaker, given the opportunity uh, uh, to get the charges against him? So that, Mr. Speaker, when we go to the motion, at least you lay ground as part of your communication. I would have wished to hear from your communication that there was a notice of motion given by Senator uh, Kangata of Muranga that, Mr. Speaker, passed one to that uh, motion. Some charges were provided. Your office facilitated the Deputy Speaker to be notified of these charges, then prepare himself so that when we go to the motion itself, the foundation of this motion will have been achieved, Mr. Speaker. Um, let me make the following ruling. Eh? Uh, first, uh, we want to be sure that we have the numbers that are required to be here, because it's supposed to be 28 according to the health protocols. So maybe you can check that so that we are not breaching the, the protocols. Secondly, um, what Senator Murkomen is asking, the motion... The, the notice of motion was moved, the motion was approved, and therefore I will want that we proceed, let the motion be um, moved. Uh, then after that, we look at whether, I mean, the, the issues, some of the issues that you are raising could easily be addressed in the, uh, in the motion. So, next order. Point of one of the speaker. The speaker, I'm not satisfied. And uh, it's only your office who can satisfy. You know the country is watching. And Mr. Speaker, the country wants to know a deputy speaker is being prosecuted in this house. Mr. Speaker, did he receive any specific charges from your office? Was there charges from the move of the motion that was sent to your office and your office facilitated the deputy speaker to receive these charges so that, Mr. Speaker, we don't turn our send it into a kangaroo court? Yes, leader of minority. Mr. Speaker, since Ms. Senator Mulcoman is insisting on this question, let him cite the constitutional provisions that require that in such a motion, sit down, you know, you don't know even the standing orders. Mr. Speaker, see what he's looking at, doing. Uh, Senator Mulcoman. Mr. Speaker, he should specify the provisions of the Constitution that require that charges be made available to any speaker or deputy speaker on whom a motion of removal has been tabled in the House. He should cite the standing orders, which states clearly that their charges are supposed to be given to the, the deputy speaker or the speaker when such a motion is tabled. In reference to the removal of the president or the vice president, the Constitution is very clear. It's very clear in the Constitution and in the standing orders that the charges must be laid before a debate can take place. So without further ado, it's a simple question. Uh, Mr. Speaker, we have not come to the motion itself. Let him read the standing order since he rose on a matter of point of order. Read to the speaker what that standing order says and the requirement under that standing order. Read to the speaker the constitution and what the requirements of the constitution require. And finally, Mr. Speaker, finally, Mr. Speaker, a motion to remove a speaker or a deputy speaker is not a trial. 
It's not an impeachment. We are not going to call witnesses, like in the case of an impeachment. No lawyers are allowed in the chamber uh, for purposes of prosecuting an impeachment trial. There is no impeachment. Senator Professor Kinthu, uh, Kindiki Kithure is not under trial. This is simply a motion for removal. Order. order. We want to well, we want to make progress. On the same issue. Um, the same issue. Order, order, senators. If you listened to what I said, I said this is the first of its kind, and actually we are talking about the office of the speaker, which is my office. Professor Kindiki is my deputy. And I say that, and just like the leader of minority has said, in the case of removal of a governor, removal of a, uh, the president or the deputy president, in an impeachment motion, uh, witnesses will be called to, to give evidence or they, they will defend himself. But this is a motion. So I, I want to Briefly. rule that we move to the motion. Then these issues that are being raised, will be raised once the motion has been laid du during the debate and it will go on record on what you have said. Mr. Speaker, I've been challenged I've not to, given you uh, order, I've been, order. I've been challenged, Mr. Speaker, to substantiate. Order, order, Senator Murukomen. I've been challenged, Mr. Speaker, it's but, on the record. But I need to substantiate the basis of my argument because it was my point of order. Okay, Mr. take Speaker. your seat. I give you a, an opportunity okay. first. Okay, Mr. Speaker. Okay. Senator Murukomen. I said, let us just cool down and, uh, and pros prosecute. Yes, Senator Murukomen. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. So, Speaker, it is deplorable, it's actually laughable that human rights defenders of yesterday, Mr. Speaker, are, the, are presiding over a process, Mr. Speaker. I have not Mr. said. Mr. Speaker, we are not going I to have order, 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 members. I have him announced order, the order, order. Mr. Speaker, Senator Murkomen, order, 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 order. Mr. Speaker, I'm on a Senate, point of order. Order, 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 Senator, leader. Yeah. I am reading. Order, order, members. I am reading the section. Okay, wait, order, order, order Senator Murkomen. Listen, please. We are honorable members. Correct. The world is watching. Go back to what I said in my communication. Let us use decorum. Let us respect each other. Let us not insinuate. Let us not use a language that demeans or casts aspersion against your colleagues. It's so directed. Mr. Speaker, I've not mentioned any name. Although they say that uh, if you mention, like Chinua Achebe said, if you mention dry bones, it's all the women who get uncomfortable. Mr. Speaker, the Constitution is very clear in Article 47. Which says, Mr. Speaker, every person, every person, including Professor Kiture Kindiki, has the right to administrative action that is expeditious, efficient, lawful, reasonable, and procedurally fair. If a right of a fundamental freedom of a person has been or is likely to be adversely affected by the administrative action, the person has a right to be given written reasons for the action. Mr. Speaker, in line with this Article 47, the National Assembly, in its standing orders, provided a, a, a long uh, Mr. Speaker, procedure of how to notify the Deputy Speaker and the Speaker if you want to remove them. Mr. Speaker, you cannot say, and it is not legally sound, to argue, Mr. Speaker, that you are going to engage in a serious constitutional process to remove a constitutional office holder and Mr. Speaker uh, 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 pretend to say that the other articles of the constitution are not going to apply. Mr. Speaker, this is a house of record. The process we are going through is a process that will be in history for the next 100, 200 years. This house, Mr. Speaker, led by its majority leader, Kipchumba Murkomen, went to the high court Mr. Speaker, to challenge procedures that have been floated by the Executive and National Assembly. This House, Mr. Speaker, has just got a ruling from the Supreme Court of processes that have been floated. This House cannot continue calling itself the Upper House and, and run a removal of its deputy in a kangaroo manner, Mr. Speaker. Order, you order, must order, order, Senator Murkomen. Point of order. Point of order. Point of order. Just a minute. Uh, what's your point of order, Senator Mutula Kilonzo Jr.? Then I'll come to King Linturi. Uh, Mr. Speaker, uh, unfortunately for Senator Murkman, he read the Constitution and left sections, which he should have read, 
so that he can educate us as to what he means in terms of fair administrative action. For the record, Article 47.3, which uh, Senator Murkoman obviously didn't want to read, uh, states as follows, for the avoidance of doubt, Parliament shall enact legislation to give effect to the rights in Clause 1, and the legislation shall, A, promote for the review of administrative action by a court, or, if appropriate, in independent impartial tribunal, and B, promote efficient administration. In support of that objection, which is not even an objection, Mr. Speaker, the Senator of Elgeo Marakwet should first of all demonstrate we are sitting in a court, two, we are a tribunal, and three, which is even more important, that the act arising out of this section, which is called the Fair Administrative Act, where Senator Murkomen, as a member of the Legal Affairs Committee, participated, should show that Article 106 on the removal of a speaker applies. And since he doesn't know, Article 106, it has no reference in the Fair Administrative Act. And we pass that law here. So, Mr. Speaker, the objection raised by Senator Orengo must be answered. What section of the Constitution is he referring to? Specifically, specifically so that we can get onto this matter. Mr. Speaker, <coughs> Mr. Speaker, I, I, I don't want to belabor the point. You, the just, question. Okay, or, okay or, just a minute, Senator Orengo. The yes. question was directed to the Speaker. It was very clear to know whether a process uh, took place between the notice of motion and whether the Deputy Speaker was notified of any charges that Mr. Speaker support the motion or reasons even that support the motion, because that is the most, the, the, the briefest motion I've ever seen to say, Mr. Speaker, we just want to remove the Deputy Speaker. Now, Article 47, Mr. Speaker, I don't know how Mutula Kilonso has his moments of brilliance when he wants the Senator McQueen. But when he wants to cover, Mr. Speaker, the truth, he cannot hide that truth in Article 473. 47.3 says, beyond the administrative procedure that is required, the law also must provide that any person who is not going to be happy with that procedure must have a process of going to a tribunal or to a court. Mr. Speaker, that is very clear. You can't lie to me that in any... Mr. Speaker, if you read Chapter 4 of the Constitution, if you read all of Chapter 4 of the Constitution, Mr. Speaker, we are about to walk into a very dangerous place. And I tell you, Mr. Speaker, it will be Professor Kiture Kindiki today it will be another person in a different forum. We cannot, as a Senate, pretend to push for processes elsewhere and, Mr. Speaker, come here to run a kangaroo okay, process. Okay, okay. Uh, uh, order, out of your being... Uh... Mr. Speaker, yes. you've heard Senator Murkomen referring to the Senate as a kangaroo court yeah. continuously. And, and he should not be addressing us if he thinks we are a kangaroo court. Secondly, he wants to mislead the House that the, the case that was filed in the High Court, that he, he led the Senators in that case. In fact, he didn't, ad, he didn't utter a word in that case. It was me and Professor Gidiki who led in that case. I was the senior counsel in that case. He's a very junior person when it comes to a master's of law. Very junior. So he should not be preaching as if he knows the law and he cannot cite a case which has been quoted in the law reports of him ever, ever having prosecuted even a case in the Supreme Court. Can he mention even one case he has prosecuted in the Supreme Court? But the point is this. There is a decision of the High Court sitting in Machakos where a similar case was taken before the High Court in which the county assembly in Machakos remove the deputy speaker. And the court considered what is fair hearing and what is a notice. And that court ruled that if hearing does not mean that you address that tribunal. It does not mean that you're even present in that tribunal. It's just like when you say public participation, 
in parliament in the committees. People can undertake public participation even by sending uh, you know, their, their, their suggestions through uh, the, uh, digitally and so on. But the more important question which I want uh, Mr. Speaker to be addressed if this matter can be dealt with fully is that in relation to the president and the vice president, there are specific provisions which says you must spell out the charges and the process is clearly set out. When it comes to the governor and deputy governor, the process is set out because that is a trial. The other thing which the junior council is not considering in trying to construct Article 47 is an action by parliament, an administrative action. It is not an administrative action. We are a, legislat a legislature. We are exercising our legislative authority <laughs> under the standing orders. No. And I think, Ms. Uh, Murkomen, if you want uh, me to give you judicial decisions on what is an administrative action, no. go and read Professor Wade. That book, if you have not read it, then I, I would understand why you don't appear in constitutional and uh, administrative point of order, division. Point of order, yeah, you Speaker. started it. What's point your point of order, of order Senator? Mr. Speaker, Senator Orengo has over and over again insulted me and insulted my education. Oh, order, order. Mr. Speaker, order, and, order, and, order and you have kept quiet. No, let me raise my point of order. Mr. What's Mr. Your Speaker, point of order? Mr. Speaker, Senator Orengo is over and over again repeating oh, and doubting my practice of law or, Mr. Speaker, my knowledge of law. Mr. Speaker, Senator Orengo and I went to the same university, even if the difference was 26 years. I got a second upper. Senator Orengo got a second law. I have two master's degree. He has none. I order, have order, two order, students, order, 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 I have order, order, two order, students, Mr. Speaker, okay. who are in this order, 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 Who is here to order, lecture order, me? Who is here to lecture me? Order, order, order. 